the Colombian rattlesnake, species spotlight coming up, and fangs in your face, venom cam action. Yo, Venom Squad. Hey, we're coming at you today with a new video. Uh, today we're going to do a species spotlight. We're going to show you some other stuff too. But anyways, we're going to do it on the Colombian rattlesnake today. And it's a Crowless Dorysis cuminensis. And it's a really neat rattlesnake. Highly toxic. And I'm going to teach you about the venom. We want to show you the true beauty of these snakes now. And we're going to feed some of the up-and-comers of this species and a couple other derisive species I'm going to show you. Before we get started, i got to give a big thank you to my supporters. I mean, I want to thank all of the Venom Squad. Everybody that follows us, everybody that watches our videos and gives us the time, you're all supporting us. The Venom Squad is the real deal. You guys support me, and I'm going to keep pumping them out for you. We've got our special supporters that have been really pulling the trigger on us. Len Brewer, thank you, brother. I, I mean, I'm starting to feel like you're giving me an allowance. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what, Len, I, it, it, it's helping big time. Austin Smith, man, I'm, brother, thank you so much, Austin. What a generous donation. And uh, Peter Storgard, Peter, thank you so much, brother. What you guys are doing for us, it really means a lot. It's really a big help, and thank you so much. I'll tell you what, I only got 5,000 subscribers, but I got some loyal subscribers. Thank you to everybody. See, the weather's getting nice here, and I'm going to start doing some outdoor videos, hunting rattlesnakes in the wild, and catch some eastern diamondbacks, and some cane brakes, and copperheads, and all the cool stuff that's down here in the southeast. Um, I actually got a chance to get out once this year, it's a little early, and I had a buddy stop by, uh, DTA, Atrox Live. What's up, brother? He stopped by. He was in town for a tattoo convention, and we got to get out in the field for a couple hours. We didn't do too good, but next time you come down, brother, we will find some snakes. Check out his channel. He's got a little YouTube channel, and he just started it. But this guy, he's not just a snake enthusiast. He is an amazing tattoo artist. Check out his Instagram. It's Tattoos by Me. And if you're in the Dallas area, I'm telling you, and if you're into tats, this is the guy you want to hit up. We'll get with you, brother. Next time you come down, we're going to go out and put you on some rattlesnakes. Okay, to start out, you guys, I'm going to pull out a female Colombian rattlesnake. Now, this animal is, she's adult, but she's still got some growing to do. Um, this animal has the capability of getting five foot, you know, massive, heavy bodied. Um, they're actually known to be one of the most toxic snakes in South America. I mean, they are definitely more venomous than a Bushmaster. They are, they are definitely more venomous than a lot of the Bothrop species. I mean, these are, these are very toxic animal, and people don't really realize just how venomous these snakes really are. I mean, these, these things are hot. But uh, I'm going to pull one out, and I'm going to tabletop them so you guys can get a good look at them and see just how beautiful they really are. This is probably one of the most venomous animals in South America. Now this is this is what they call the Colombian rattlesnake. Now it's got three different kind of geographic zones where it comes from but it, it's endemic to Colombia and Venezuela but it's a very it, it, it's variable. This snake can be of several different colors and and according to the locale of it they can be really variable but what's interesting about this snake is they get big I mean they can get four or five foot really heavy bodied and, and this one is an adult, and it's maybe three and a half foot, pushing four, but it, it's definitely got some growing to do. It's just reaching sexual maturity. But let me tell you, this snake's venom, is, it's hot. It's extremely hot. Now, it's, it's, it's literally got what we're calling now is a crow toxin. It, this is 64% crow toxin with this snake, which means that crow toxin, it, it, it's kind of the slang name for it's, it's literally having neurotoxins, nephrotoxins, 
myotoxins, and the venom is also hemorrhagic on top of it. So it makes this animal extremely, extremely hot, extremely venomous. And the whole point of it is, is this snake is so neurotoxic. I mean, people that suffer from bites from this animal, the first thing that they usually start, the first systemic signs of this bite is like literally like Bell's palsy, like facial drooping. And that's, that's part of the neurotoxic venom taking effect. And it's, uh, it's actually facial paralysis. I mean, your eyelids drooping, your mouth drooping open. And then it moves on down and it starts affecting your respiratory system and you go into respiratory failure and you know and then you know renal failure and, and paralysis and it's it's definitely one of the most lethal venomous snakes in South America and of course I breed these <laughs> so <laughs> I got to breed the most venomous animal this animal is a three-year-old and now they're really not that volatile. They're not really as nasty as everybody thinks the Central and South American rattlesnakes are. It depends on the animal. It literally depends on the animal. I mean, some of them can be cranky. Some of them can be just as chill as this one. Now, this is a little girl, and she's one of our future breeders. But this snake has a really high importance right now in the venom world. So they're looking into a lot of different things to do with this venom. And it just may hold some secrets that we don't know about. And there's actually a lot of studies going on right now with the Cumanensis. Crowless Dorisus Cumanensis, a very cool rattlesnake. But look at the body on that gal. Heavy body, really beaded up. She's really got these big, thick beads on her scales. Just a gnarly looking rattlesnake. One of my favorite rattlesnakes. And of course, that signature long neck stripe on them. I love these things. I mean, how cool is it? But you can notice the difference between our native rattlesnakes have that big, buffy head. Look at the head on this animal. It's kind of elongated. It ain't got that big, heart-shaped head. And that's kind of a signature thing with your, with your South American Dorisus, okay? They don't have that big head. And they've kind of got that little scrawny neck. Not like our Eastern Diamondbacks or cane brakes with a big head and big, heavy body. They're actually built a little differently. And look at this long ridge that runs along our back. They're built anatomically different than our native rattlesnakes here in the U.S., which makes them cooler to me. I mean, I love this stuff. But just so you guys can get an up-close, good, nice, personal look at this rattlesnake. This is probably the most toxic rattlesnake, definitely the most toxic reptile in South America. Hotter than a Bushmaster, hotter than a Fur de Lance. This guy's venom is serious. I mean, if you guys haven't seen some of my older videos, go back and watch the uh, five live feedings with the, uh, with the Zobcon rattlesnakes. That's another neotropical rattlesnake. And watch how quickly they dispatch live prey. But I'm going to go ahead and put this little mama here back. And I'm going to show you guys a couple more different species of Crowless Dorisus. Now, this one you'll see looks quite different. This one is a, a nice vibrant color. He, this, this is a male. He doesn't have all them chocolate and dark colors that that, 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 that that other one, the previous one had. Now this is the Crowless Dorisus Dryanus. Now this snake is endemic to Guyana or French Guyana also. And now this animal, pretty much the same animal, but we classify him as a subspecies, but this animal is known for getting big. They can get pretty, pretty good size on them. But notice how bright this animal is. Totally different color. Looks totally different than the other one. Same body build, same structure, but still a Crowless Dorisus. There's that long signature neck stripe. But what a beauty, huh? This snake's got a lot of yellows in it, a lot of creams. And same venom. This venom isn't quite as potent. It's actually missing a few of the components that the Cumanensis has, but deadly enough in its own right. I mean, it can definitely put a hurt on you. It carries a lot of hurt juice, so, <laughs> but what an exquisite animal. And we've got a group of these two, but just to show you some different subspecies of Crowless Dorisus. I'm going to go ahead and pop this one back, and I'm going to show you yet one more. 
Okay, Venom Squad, now this is yet another species of Neotropical Rattlesnake. Now, this isn't a South American Rattlesnake. This is a Crotalus simus culminatus. Now, I showed you the Cumanensis, which is a Durissus, and this is where it gets confusing if, if you're really not into rattlesnakes. This is the simus. This snake actually hails from Mexico. Now, this is what we like to call the, the holy grail of, of rattlesnake keeping, and I mean, they used to be kind of really difficult to get, and uh, they still are. And uh, but I'm fortunate enough to have a have a group of these to work with. And uh, but look at the difference in color. Now these snakes are a lot sharper and cleaner looking when it comes to pattern, but the color of this thing is just amazing. I mean, these are the holy grail of keeping neotropicals. When you got culminatus, you can brag a little bit. <laughs> And, we, and, and the thing is, we have Culminatus and we have Zobcon. And now this is, let me see, which one is this? This is a male, okay? And once again, this species is a very toxic venom, very close to the, to the, to the, the South American counterpart, okay? And this animal is literally a youngster. This one is only a couple years old. And this snake's got a lot of growing to do. They have the capability to get very large. And now primarily this animal, it's, it, it's a rodent eater. But as a youngster, it would feed on, you know, different lizards and, and, and reptilian fare. But it would also take birds. It would take whatever it can subdue. They're very opportunistic feeders. But of course in captivity, we're, you know, they're, they're on a diet of rodents, of, 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 of lab rats. But how amazing is that? What a beautiful specimen, and they're variable too. I'm going to pull out another one and show you a female of this specimen. Now, they're not sexually dimorphic. I've got males that look different than males. I've got females that look different than other females, and we've got a group of these also. we got a bunch of rattlesnakes. Let me tell you something. we got we got quite the collection of neotropical rattlesnakes and bushmasters. This is the stuff we live for, man. We live for the, the central South American reptiles that's that that's what we we love to do but uh just so you can get a look now this is crowless simus culminatus i'm gonna put this big boy back and i'm gonna pull out a female so you can see just how different that they can be within the same species okay and this is yet another color phase of the crowless simus now this is the the culminatus but this one is electric. I really hope that, I mean, we've got a couple lights on her, and I hope that the camera picks up this color. I mean, we're trying to use all these lights and this camera stuff. This is dirt off that table. But this animal is so beautiful. I'm blown away every time I take her out and, and look at her. It is just literally electric. This is, this is my favorite of the group, and she's got a lot of growing to do. She's going to get big. She's going to get massive. But just the color of this animal is just amazing. It is literally the baddest of the bad. But interesting fact about these things. Now, this, this species, the, 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 the Crotalus simus, cum, uh, <laughs> I get confused, the Culminatus. Now, years ago, they used to be kind of popular. There was actually a morph of this snake and we were calling it the Exantic Culminatus and it's this species of rattlesnake and it came in like a a bright yellow color with some white diamonds they were gorgeous and I actually owned a couple of them they didn't fare too well I got them from a bad source and but I'll tell you um it was easier to get the Exantic ones the actual morph than it was to get the true color ones to actually get the normal ones and the reason why is because People were working with the Exanics and not working with the damn regular ones. So it was harder to find one that was just normal colored fades the way they're supposed to be. And it was easier to get the Exanic ones. And I'll tell you, these things were like next to impossible to get. And they still are. They're really hard to acquire. And we're fortunate enough to have a group of them. And we'll be reproducing these damn things here as soon as we can. <laughs> but... What a cool rattlesnake. And this one takes the cake. This is probably the most beautiful culminatus I've ever laid my eyes on. I mean, 
I wish you guys could see this in person. I hope that the camera picks up this thing's color. And then again, we're learning how to use the lights in the camera, so bear with us. But what an amazing snake. It doesn't get no better than that. That's for damn sure. But just so you guys can get a look at them. Now, for the last one, I'm going to pull out another species of Crolosimus, and we call it the Yucatan rattlesnake. And it actually lives on the other side of the country from where this one lives. Yet, one more rattlesnake for you. And this one is the monster. Now, we had to do some special trick filming here to get this snake to look small on the table. <laughs> but anyways, now, if you all have seen any of my past videos and you watch some of these quick kill videos, this is the culprit. Now, this is probably one of the hottest little son bitches around. This is the Yucatan rattlesnake. And we produced 33 of these last season. And we bred them again. And literally, we'll probably produce 33 more. <laughs> but these things are growing like crazy. But this is the Yucatan rattlesnake from the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. This is Crotalus simus zobcon. Let's put this one back in his home. And let's show you a big one. You got him in there, D? Not really? Here, let's, uh, let's just pull one out. Okay, and that little guy that I just showed you, this is what he's going to turn into, okay? Now, this is a full-grown adult male, Crolus simus zobcon, the Yucatan rattlesnake. And actually, we've got one that's quite a bit bigger than this one. This is definitely a mature male, but we've got one that's probably it's pushing five and a half foot. This one's about five, but we've got one that's a little bit bigger. Let me reposition there. There we go. And one thing about rattlesnakes, you can do this with rattlesnakes. You can actually pick them up and get them off the ground, and they don't trip out as much. You can't do this with Bothroff. They don't like this. As soon as they feel their bodies leaving the ground, they bug out on you. But with uh, the big rattlesnakes, they're actually pretty chill. These guys got a pretty good temperament. But that's what he'll turn into. What a beautiful specimen. And the color. These guys are unique in color. They're almost a pewter in color. Really a slick rattlesnake. I mean, look at the size of that guy. He is awesome. Hey, turn around look at the camera, dude. All right, big boy. Time to put you back. Okay, y'all. Now I showed you guys a bunch of different neotropical rattlesnakes. Uh, I'm going to buzz through and feed some of our up-and-comers here that, that, that I'm raising out in these grow-out tubs in this rack. And these are uh, Dorisus dryanus, uh, Dorisus cuminensis. Now, I'm going to film this with the Venom Cam, with our GoPro, so we get that fangs-in-your-face strike, okay? And... When I feed frozen thawed, and of course I start out with a damn bucket, you know, hot water. I don't make my water too hot where it explodes my rats. I let them thaw out for a good hour, a good solid hour. And I make that water hot enough where if I stick my hand in it, I can still leave it in there for a couple minutes without burning my damn self. But anyways, I use a different set of tongs to reach down, down into this hot water and pull out a rat, all right? Because I don't want these getting too hot because this thing already gets a little bit warm. So, I want the strike to be here. I'll use a different set of tongs, and what I do is I shake my rats off really good. I've seen guys feeding stuff, and they go like this. Hot water, and they're doing this. Water's dripping. Hot water on your way to the damn cage or the exhibit. When you open that up, we're feeding a pit viper, okay? They're working off a heat signature. I've seen snakes bead on that hot water drops, ignore the damn rat, the prey item, and go in for the hot water drops, and it throws them off. And what this is doing is this is putting you in danger, okay? Because you you got a hot rat on there, you're coming across with it, there's hot water dripping, snake's coming out, bam, he's going to go there or he's going to go there. And that's how you're going to end up getting bit, okay? So I dry my rats off, all right? I dry them off. And now I've got water all over the floor here, and I'm going to wipe this up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't need to be slipping and falling 
with a damn rattlesnake cage open. Okay, so I cleaned up all the water all over the floor so I don't slip and bust my ass. But anyways, now I dry my rodents off, okay? And I see a lot of guys say, oh, God, you know, if they pick up substrate because the, the rat's wet and they eat it, it doesn't hurt them, they eat it in the wild. Nah. Now, I dry them off just for that reason, especially when I'm feeding a pit viper, okay? I want them dry. I don't want hot water dripping everywhere and throwing the snake off. And what it ultimately will do when he's picking up all them different heat signatures, the rat, the hot water dropping everywhere, the heat signature coming off your body, you're going to throw that snake into a defensive strike, not a predatory strike. So what we want to do, our main objective is, is to put a predatory strike on the damn prey item, okay? Not anywhere else. So that's the whole idea of this, okay? And we keep the venom camera off until we're ready to go in because we try to keep this thing cool because this thing gets warm if it's on too long. So we want the strike isolated right here. But for safety reasons alone, Dry the damn rats off so you're not dripping hot water everywhere. And you don't throw the damn snake off. And throw them into that defensive strike. You want a predatory strike. Okay, but now, <laughs> this might seem a little crazy to some people, but I use a different set of tongs, okay? I shake them off really well. I dry my rats off. Now, there we go. I dry them off so they're nice and dry, okay? Now, I do something with my rodents, okay? I feel them. I roll them around really good in my hands. I make sure I don't feel no cold spots, okay? Because I've found ice inside rodents before. You find a cold spot and it's like, damn, it's still, it's still a chunk of ice in there. And I do this too. I actually grab them by the head right here, both thumbs, and I cave their head in. See? And then when I get that blood out of their nose or come out of their eye, I know that that head cavity is, is, is completely thawed out, okay? So I got a nice hot rat. And I check my temps on them. So I know it's right. Because if he bites something and it's too damn hot, what he's going to do is he's going to quick bite it, let it go, and it's going to throw him in a defensive posture. Because he just puts something in his mouth like a chili pepper. Okay? It's just too freaking hot. It's got to be the right temperature. They're not eating something 150 degrees. 100 degree mark is usually pretty good. 100, 105, warm enough to incite a predatory strike. A heat-seeking strike. So I take a temperature on them. And I am at 99 degrees. And that's pretty good. And it cooled off because it was sitting there. But it still feels warm in my hand. Alright, we're going to start out over here. And we're going to feed this guy. Comes. Come on, you rascal. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, oh, that was a good hit and a second one. Oh, I love doing this. <laughs> Very good, huh? And you didn't bite my camera. Let's set that right down there for you. That was awesome. And close him right up. And you're probably wondering, you're saying, well, he's feeding them things, just them big jumbo mice, and these guys normally will eat a medium rat. But I mix things up when I'm feeding my rattlesnakes. I'll give them a smaller prey item. I'll give them a big prey item. I don't feed on a regular schedule. I feed on a, I call it a broken schedule, okay? It's literally like I'll feed them heavy for a month, then I'll give them two or three weeks off. Big rat, small rat, thing, and you can see all my snakes are very vibrant, and very healthy, they got good body weight. I don't f believe in feeding animals on a strict schedule. Once a week, give them a rat, and it's, that, that's, I think that's bad for them. They get too much fat. It's a stress on their liver, on their kidneys. Break it up. Mix it up. Feed heavy, feed light. Once a week, every three weeks. Bust it all up. Okay, we're going to buzz through these real quick. 
This is their small prey item week. A little tap. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, that, that's going to be a good one. That's going to be an awesome venom cam strike. Good job, little girl. All right, baby. Let's get you back there. Hey, there you go. Come on, straight on. Come get it. Oh, uh, you're going to hang on, huh? Very good. And I'll go ahead and shake it for him. Let him, let him give it some hurt juice. All right, buddy. Take your, take your mouse in there. All right, let's close this one up, and we got one more. We ain't going to waste no time, y'all. We're going to buzz right through these. This is the way I do it when I'm doing everyday normal work, so you're going to see just how I do it. <laughs> Last one, and this is a cuminensis. Where's he at? There he is. This makes a mean little bastard. All right, buddy. Nice strike. And another one. He said, I'm going to hang on to it this time. You got it, huh, Bubba? Get some heart juice. There's a little noise maker. <laughs> Come on back and check us out, Venom Central. If you're new to the channel, hit the logo down there and subscribe. And please give us a thumbs up and share our videos. Um, and thank you to the Venom Squad, to all my supporters. You guys got me, man, and I love it. But y'all come back and check us out. This is Willie. Put up enough with the snakes. Out. I got to do later. this for an hour now.